Foxy Lacey. Hi, guys. Hi, Carla. New Girls Rock BH Love. I love that name. Oh, we have Elaine making Wahlberg lover. Hi, Jill. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. It's that time again. Oh, 80s baby. Susie Q. DJ Miss T. The fantastic, fabulous. All right. This is exciting. Just waiting for a few more people to join in. Hey, there's DJ Jules. Hi, Carla. I am going to put my lip gloss on because I know it annoys Kelly Mel. It's a little light, but that's okay. Hi, guys. Me, DJ AK. Hi, Noelle. Such a beautiful name. Hi, Kel. Kelly girl. Oh, hello, mother. <laughs> My mom is obsessed with me, I'm just saying. All right, you guys. Let's see, we got a bunch of people coming in. This is me, DJ AK. We've got our Throwback Thursday here on No More Games Radio. And we're going to do some Blockhead Show and Tell. And we have a couple people who are going to be joining us tonight, which is going to be so much fun. Oh, she, Noelle loves the lip gloss. Well, thank you, Noelle. It is from Ulta. And it's called, what the fake? It's a lip plumper. I need all the help I can get. Hi, Annie. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to No More Games Radio Instagram Live. I am... DJ AK, the Amanda Knight, in case you weren't sure. And um, tonight we're going to be doing some Blockhead Show and Tell, which is actually inspired by this piece of memorabilia that I have um, that I got way back in the day. And I think it's so fun and so cool and so unique. It's literally probably my prized possession of New Kids Memorabilia. And I have a ton. I have a whole box filled with stuff. I actually had to go to my storage <laughs> unit to pull it out and get some stuff for Blockhead Show and Tell. Um, I'm also showing and telling my Jordan Knight Let's Go Higher shirt tonight because you know I'm a Jordan girl. And Got to show, got to rep the love for Mr. JK, right? I forget even, I mean, obviously these shirts came out when he um, did his solo album, but I don't even remember where I got it. Yes, I have the old school peace sign. I love this. This was one of the things I showed last week during show and tell, in case you missed it. Um, I see why am I... I also showed my <laughs> New Kids on the Block plastic beer stein. Um, I had a couple of uh, old pieces of memorabilia like this book, Jordan and John, Night of the New Kids on the Block, all kinds of fun facts in here like Jordan hates broccoli and John wears a size 9 shoe. Um, a very weird piece of memorabilia that I have from a friend of mine who found it in a uh, garage sale and it's a comic book a new kids on the block comic book not very flattering at all towards the new kids um <laughs> hey christy how are you you can see the picture there <laughs> um and then of course a newer piece of memorabilia that i cherish and it's my signed hanging tough 30th anniversary album compilation four different albums so that's what we went over last week I had this idea to do blockhead show and tell because I feel like we all have collected so many memories 
over the years and um, so many unique memories like this, for instance, that I still had, you know, after all these 30 something years. Um, we have things that are weird <laughs> like this. We have things that everybody else has too. Um, some of us have memorabilia like tattoos that maybe one of the guys drew for us or wrote for us. I have one of those and maybe one day I'll show you, but not today. It's, it's children's programming here. Um, no, I'm kidding. Um, but it's just a place for us to kind of share our experiences and maybe we just have something little, like it could be a piece of confetti, but it has a great story attached to it. And so that's what I want. That was my idea. That was my thinking for what we were going to do here on Blockhead Show and Tell. So, um, and it could be any piece of musical memorabilia that you have. So if it's something you're interested in sharing with us, we would absolutely love to have you come on. Um, send us a DM at No More Games Radio. And, oh, my girls are already chatting me up. I better, I better shut, shut them off. Sorry, ladies. Um... So I think we're going to have some fun tonight. We're going to be on for a little bit. We have uh, DJ Jules who's going to join us for a little bit with some of her memorabilia. We have a loyal listener, Maribel, who's going to come on and share some of her musical knowledge with us. And um, Noelle loves this idea. Good. Sign up, Noelle. We'll see you next, next time. Um, and then hopefully, I'm hoping that we have a friend popping in um, who's going to share with us uh, a little bit about a show that he's uh, has coming up not a new kid <laughs> don't get don't get too excited but um but a good friend to the station so if i see him pop up we're going to bring him right in but without further ado i have some memorabilia that i want to share with you tonight for blockhead show and tell and of course they all have stories attached to them as well so the first one I want to show you is this album. It is a LP single of I'll Be Loving You Forever. Some of you guys might have this. It's not the full album. It's just the single and it has on it the I'll Be Loving You Forever, the 12 inch version, I'll Be Loving You Forever, the seven inch version, and then on side two, I'll Be Loving You Forever remix style, which I don't know what that means because I've actually never listened <laughs> to, to this. I don't, have a, I don't have a turntable. I haven't had one for years. Um, and then last but not least, I'll Be Loving You Forever instrumental for those karaoke lovers out there. Me being one of them, you know I would sing that. Um, remember, remember albums? <laughs> I remember... I used to love the smell of the album. Like sometimes if you got it at a record store and it was maybe a used album, it had like a musty basement smell to it. This one was definitely from a bargain bin. I think my cousin got this for me um, probably a long, long time ago. I know it's not a original from back in the day, um, but... I remember loving to pull out the album, especially if there were pictures or a liner note. And I think, I think on the, um, on the full album, they had, you know, the pictures and, and thank yous and all of that stuff. The, maybe the lyrics were even listed. Um, and oh, it's upside down. Not even too many scratches on this one. So that's not bad. I feel like maybe... It didn't get a lot of love in its day, and that's why it ended up in the bargain bin. But that that person's trash was my treasure. And if I ever get a turntable, I will be sure to play it. Oh, and it says produced by Maury Starr and Michael Johnson. Remember, they, when did they talk about Michael Johnson? Was that in um, Funky Funky Christmas? Um... <laughs> Recorded at the House of Hits in Boston, mixed at Mission Control in Westford, Massachusetts, remixed by Maurice Starr, Michael Johnson, and Phil Green, 
special version from the Columbia LP, Hangin' Tough. So this is one of my favorites. I actually have two of these, one of which is framed, because um, I'm a geek, and I just love this. Um, so let's go back in time a little bit. And now you guys are going to get a little window into the soul of eighth grader Amanda, DJ AK, before she even was a thing. Um, some of you who follow me on social media may have seen this before. This is a homemade piece of memorabilia. <laughs> can't even believe I'm going to show you guys this, but it's so funny that I have to show you. I made this notebook for my eighth grade year. I thought I, it, and I was in eighth grade in 1990 and 91. Take it all in. <laughs> Take it all in folks. I made it with puffy paint. Um, some, some rhinestones, stars, hearts, some new kids on the block trading cards, pictures that I cut out of magazines. <laughs> Look at Jordan. <laughs> Look at his eyebrows. Oh, they were close together. Look at Donnie. He's like, hey, some of the puffy paint has even vacated its original location here. Um, but you can see, I wanted to represent all of the guys and then my favorite guys. So at this point, I guess it was Jordan and uh, because I have three pictures of, oh, four pictures of Jordan. Look at that one. Look at this. That was pretty risque for a bunch of 11 year old girls to be looking at. Uh, Joey in his lip gloss phase. Love it. Jordan, monochromatic and looking, looking adorbs. Little Joey. Hey, it's little Joey Joe coming down the street. Check him out. Scandalous. Oh, Jordan and Joe. Oh, and look at Jordan. He's got his little line shaved. So hot. This was, I'm going to cover my name in case you guys are all weird stalkers. AL, that was my homeroom. I put my name on the side in puffy paint. It's a legit, like, wannabe trapper keeper. Wait for it. <laughs> it's even stuck together. Um, <clears throat> complete with a Bart Simpson sticker that I think I got in the machine at the roller skating rink. Do you remember, like you could put the quarters in and push the lever in and then the stickers would come out? Bart Simpson, no class today. <laughs> and then of course, my class schedule, which I never put on there. Click Toucan Sam there. Uh, oh wait, no, I do have, uh, no, I got nothing in here. Um, so... This was 1990 and 91. I graduated eighth grade in 1991, middle school, junior high, whatever you call it. And this was my notebook. I'm pretty sure I got made fun of heavily for this. Um, to those people, I would say a hearty F you um, or, you know, look at me now. <laughs> I met them. I met them all, all five of them. Um, I've interviewed Donnie. Um, I sang for Jordan. Uh, so neener, neener, neener on all you haters. Although they say you're not somebody until you have haters. So I guess I was somebody way back in the eighth grade. Hi, Lisa, my coworker is watching from my real life. Don't tell anybody what a geek I am, Lisa. So Anybody make anything like this? Anybody have any handmade, crazy, <laughs> old school memorabilia? Yeah, to the non-believers, I say peace, Kelly. That's right. How you like me now? Um, yeah. So.
so my cousin helped me make this because she's very artistic. Um, she also took me to a few New Kids concerts back in the day. She older, she's older than me. Um, her name is Lisa. Shout out to Lisa, my cousin, not Lisa, my coworker. Um, shout out to her too. And oh, there's Allison. Hey. Um, so she helped me make this. She helped me do the layout. <laughs> She brought the puffy paints and everything. And one of my friends uh, from my class, we, we both made one. It was the same. We were hanging out and my cousin came over to help us make these. And then I believe, if I'm not mistaken, she put tips on our nails with rhinestones. Sounds about right for 1990, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so this is the kind of stuff that I love. I think is so funny and fun and unique. And if you have something like this, we want you to come on to Blockhead Show and Tell and tell us all about it as well. Um, Donnie, if you're seeing this, I'm sorry. I don't know why I only have one picture of you on there. And it's, you know, you're catching flies in that picture. You're, it's not the most um, flattering, but we should make grown-up ones, Kelly. <gasps> oh my gosh. That's an amazing idea. We should definitely do that. <laughs> All right. Now, let's fast forward to the year 2012. Where were you in 2012? Were you checking your dates on the Jordan Knight calendar? Because I know that I was. Um, <clears throat> Jordan Knight had a red letter year in 2012. When he released his album Unfinished, I believe it was 2012. And he had such a good year. This man released his own calendar. Now, I had a new kid's calendar back in the day, which I have in my box of tricks. And we will definitely be revisiting that at some point. But this, I mean, come on. That's probably a Shirley Temple right there because we all know Jordan doesn't drink. Um, yes, I be yes, Christy Jordan does need to make another calendar. Um, <clears throat> look at the man. He looks like he's either, I don't know what, getting ready to perform on some world stage, or maybe he's going to a wedding or in a wedding. I don't know. Um, but he looks hot and I wouldn't mind seeing him without the bow tie or the shirt or anything like that. Um, so let's just take a quick trip to 2012 and to, oh shit, January. Look, look at January. He's very pensive. He's thinking, he's thinking, what can the new kids do next to keep our fans excited? Um, it looks like he's writing something. He has a pen. He has a pen in his hand. He's in a hotel for sure. This might be the after party because it looks like he's disrobed a tad from his, um, his front page attire. Oh, a stingy calendar. Oh, good Lord. I went to the stingy party too in, in New York City. I'll talk about that one night. That was insane. Donnie kissed me. Anywho. All right. So January, a lot of thought. Oh, oh, <clears throat> whoa, February. He's still in <laughs> the attic. No, <laughs> he's definitely in a hotel room here. This is looks like the after after party. Look at his eyes. Look at the way he is like looking into your soul. He's like, hey, girl, hey, um, I remember seeing somebody put this picture on their door um, on one of the cruises years ago. And it said, hi, Jill. It said, Jordan F me all night with a K. And he wrote on it, sure. <laughs> Go Google that. Maybe you'll find it somewhere. Um, in the annals of Google images. I have it somewhere too, but hi, look at it. Look at his face. Look at his chesticles. Hello. 
amazing. Um, and it just goes to show that he does have a super good sense of humor, even though he's a little, he could be a little dry and pasty sometimes. Um, <laughs> he does have a great sense of humor and, you know, just the fact that he would acknowledge that request on the, on the cruise door, I think was uh, just adorable of him. All right. So have we had enough of February? Can there be enough of February? I don't know, but let's see. March. Oh, now that is from unfinished. That is from the unfinished album photo shoot. And this we know because I believe he used a picture very similar to this for his let's go higher promo poster. If I'm not mistaken, um, I'll have to find that, but looking fly, looking hot in his little jacket. Maybe that's like a little bit of a distressed denim jacket. Hi, April. He's got his chain on as per usual. Um, looking hot and sexy with his little widow's peaks there. I love them. I don't even care. I don't care what you say. He's so, he's still so hot. Um, little five o'clock shadow action. Hey. <laughs> um, and that smolder, that smoldering look in his eye. My ring light is putting such a glare on this. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so hot. And I mean, don't we look adorable together? Just saying. Um, okay, so March. Oh, and look at even his, his sexy shadow. Multi-dimensional. Multi-dimensional. So hot. <gasps> April! Look at that chiseled face. Look at that. He's reclining, he's relaxing, but he's still thinking about something. Look at that little side eye there. He's thinking, should I kiss my CD covers with chapstick and sign them for all the girls, all the Jordan girls? Should I do that? He did it. Um, looking hot, looking toned. And I mean, look at that jawline. Look at that hairline. He does not look bad. For <laughs> Kelly said, he's thinking about you. Yeah, right. Um, he's thinking, I got to get a restraining order against that Amanda Knight. She's whacked out. <gasps> birthday month. Birthday suit. Coincidence? May, as we all know, is Jordan's birthday month. Um, May 17th is his birthday. He is a Taurus. Emerald is his birthstone. May, <laughs> Jill said, May is my favorite month. Yeah, me too. That's all I'm going to say. He has... He has very interesting nipples, but, um, <laughs> Noelle said, I'm a Donnie girl, but damn, um, I don't know wh what he's doing here. I don't know where he's going, what he's getting ready for, but I'm in, I am all in hook it up. Oh my gosh. I don't even know if it could get any better than May. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, yoga. Oh, this is so namaste in June. Namaste, a Jordan girl forever. Um, some of uh, you cruise goers know that back in the day, Jordan would do some yoga on the cruise. Um, I don't picture him as being like a yoga kind of guy. So this was very interesting to me. Um, that he would choose to do a, yo a yoga, uh, class out on the Lido deck or the Lido deck, whatever you, whatever you call it. Um, but he did and no one does a sexier tree than Jordan. I mean, downward dog, he is all over it. 
Um, look at that. Look at that extension. He's taking a class. That is perfect form there. Beautiful stretching. He's, I think that, I think he's talking into his microphone there. I once asked him why he's always touching his microphone. Um, the box that's in his pocket or attached to their, you know, pant leg or wherever the heck it is. Um, you know, the, even the, uh, ear, what do they call them? Inner ears. They have monitors that they can control on their person. And I always noticed him fidgeting with it. And I asked him one time and he said, oh, I think I have like OCD for that because he was always trying to perfect the like the sound that he was hearing of himself in his ear it had to be perfect in order for him to get out there and do his best which i think you know whatever he could sing the phone book on the street corner and i'd i'd pay money to see it <gasps> god bless america it's the fourth of july look at that nice white tea i was like what's that but that's the little hole to put your pin through um looking sexy he's still in the hotel maybe this is the attic i don't know um he is look at those lips i don't know what else to say like he's so <laughs> no else said let freedom ring yeah definitely definitely some fireworks uh going off with this picture i love it i love it i love it dare we even go to august want one last look at july hey girl my name's jordan and i love you uh oh <gasps> yeah he's got his ray-bans on still with the five o'clock shadow his hair is looking perfectly coiffed He's got that nice little faux hawk, faux hawk going on. Nice shirt. Although somebody didn't iron it properly because it looks like that's from the hanger that it was hanging on. Where was his dresser to fix that for him? Uh, <laughs> all right. I realize some of you Jordan girls might be a little bored with this so we'll, we'll speed it up a little bit let's do september september is my birthday month i am a virgo hi i'm amanda and i'm a virgo and i want to be loved by you jordan <clears throat> so this is a great collage of performance shots from jordan over the years we've got some from new kids this is definitely from uh we got a fenway shot here oh give it to you right there we know i know what he's singing in these songs that's craziness um this is from his unfinished solo show which was fantastic i'll be loving you forever i mean come on <clears throat> the cruise the beach beach performance singing his little heart out look at him Oh yeah, the, the medley, Valentine Girl. I love the pause in Valentine Girl, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's, it's fun to look back to and see some of their older um, stage attire. Um, and it's really kind of evolved over the years quite a bit. But I think it was a little more, more simple back in the day. Now I feel like everything is so much more bedazzled. Um, but I, I ain't mad at it. I'm not mad at my birthday month either. This is a beautiful thing. Uh, let's see October. Oh. Okay, girls. Getting a little chilly. He's got to hold on to his shirt. Getting a little nip in the air, if you will. Um, still very pensive. Very serious. Thinking... I don't know. I don't know what he's thinking. He's probably thinking, what am I going to have for lunch today? Uh, 
we always like to, we always like to think these guys are like thinking about something mm -hmm. so, so deep and crazy, but it's probably like, I got to go pick up my dry cleaning. <laughs> October is a good look for you, Jordan. I love it. Let's do November. Oh, oh, look at, <clears throat> all right. Okay. We got the sun coming from behind here. We got a nice little background of the of the city wherever he might be. Look at that nice profile. Look at those lips. He could have had his hair cut a little bit more in the back there, not going to lie, but hey. He's looking at something, is it you? November. He does have a great side profile. He is just Super adorbs. All right, let's let's put this to bed. Let's get to December here. <gasps> Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't mind unwrapping that underneath my Christmas tree. That's what I celebrate. Look at the man. Look at the man. So dapper, so put together, no hanger bumps on this suit, so gorgeous, just a beautiful specimen of a man. Jill, you love his hands? I love his hands too. December love, that's right, April, we got that December love. Oh, but wait a minute, there's a bonus! January. <laughs> they must have had one extra good shot. Now, because I'm like going blind in my old age, I would love to be able to make this bigger, you know, like expand it a little bit and see what's in the reflection of his glasses because I'm a creep and a stalker. Um, but, and you can see, you can kind of see through the glasses that he's got that little Jordan squint, like, like, not like the squint that he does in the, in the five star pictures because the flash is too much, but that little, like, sup, you know, sup, sup ladies. <laughs> oh, and sadly that is it. Thank you for taking a trip back in time to 2012 with me. Jordan Knight's calendar. It was amazing. I might just hang it up no matter what month or no matter what year it is, I should say. I might just put it in my room and flip the pictures. <laughs> I will take some pictures of this and post it on my Instagram for those of you who want a closer look. Last but not least, this is a personal piece of blockhead memorabilia. Um, and it means a lot to me because... I had it made, specially made, for my first concert that I went to of the reunion tour in 2008, 2009. What year was it, girls? I don't know. Um, I went to see them at the IZOD Center in New Jersey, which no longer exists. It was right after they opened in Canada. So it was like maybe the third show or fourth show of, of that first tour when they were back and we were all still like holy shit they're back and I thought I was so clever because I went online and I had myself a little shirt made and it says if you can see it you can't really see it it says I still love Jordan oh 2009 I still love Jordan and on the back full service 2009. I thought I was so clever with this design. I was like, oh yeah. There were like 10 other girls <laughs> in the VIP alone who had a shirt that said, I still love one of the new kids. But I felt like a million bucks in this shirt. Um, I was so happy to see them. I couldn't believe I was even going to be in the same room with them, let alone meet them. And, uh, Let's just say I had definitely taken advantage of my drink tickets. So <laughs> I ended up 
talking to Danny for almost the whole time. <laughs> and he was lovely. He was lovely, but I barely, barely got an opportunity to, to see Jordan. Um, but that's okay. I've had plenty of opportunities since then. So, um, so with that said, that's my memorabilia for the evening. Let's bring somebody else in to share with us. And I am going to invite her now. Um, and hopefully, yeah. this is Diet Dr. Pepper. I just keep it in here so it's really cold. <gasps> hey! DJ Jules! How are you? Can you hear me okay? I can. I can hear you. Uh, How you. are you? I'm doing fine. Thank you. How about you? I'm doing amazing. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that you were able to make this happen tonight. I and I'm excited. Yeah, I'm really excited to see what you have to show us because you have some really fun music memorabilia that you want to share with us tonight. It's not new kids related, but that's okay. It's called Blockhead Show and Tell, but it can be anything that you want to share, any kind of music memorabilia. I just happen to have a, a shit ton of new kids stuff. <laughs> so that's, you know, that's my go-to, but, um, but I'd love for you to, to kind of take it away and show us what you've got. Okay. Well, back in the day, I loved New Kids on the Block, of course. And, of course, my heart was just going fast for Jordan because I was a Jordan girl back in the day in high school. But I also loved Nelson. And yeah. so I had all kinds of Nelson stuff on my doors. I had the posters and everything. And so I followed them through the years. And Nelson, I, for those of you guys who don't remember, Nelson, the band, their twin brothers, Matthew and Gunner, long, long, blonde, flowing, beautiful locks of hair, right? Yeah. After the, the Rain, that song, After the Rain, mm -hmm. um, what was their other big hit? More Than Ever. Oh, yeah, what a good one. More Than Ever, um, After the Rain, um... I can't live without your love and affection. I can't live without your love and affection. Yeah. I can't wait another night on my oh, yeah. own. Something like that, right? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. And, and tell me now, because you will know this, were they descendants of Ricky Nelson? Am I getting they that are. right? And, and Ozzy and Harriet Nelson? Yep. So Ozzy and Harriet, Harriet are the grandparents. And then Ricky was their dad. And so, um, and then Tracy Nelson. Do you remember um, the Father Dowling um, TV series back in the day? Did you watch yeah. Father Dowling? Yes. Okay, yes. Tracy was the nun that was on Fa Father Dowling. Oh, okay. So, wow. So they're a very multi-talented family. But, but the Nelson twins had a, a stellar career. In the, in the 90s as a rock band, right? Yes. And so I kind of have followed them through the years. And back in the, like, early 2000s, like, Gunner had a blog, an online blog, and I used to follow it and read his stuff. It was, he posted periodically, and I finally decided to email him, got a stock email reply, but I was so thrilled. Yeah. <laughs> And so, anyway, I was writing about it in my diary, and I just, I, I had this vision, this dream of hoping to meet them one day, and I wrote it down. Yeah. Never knowing, okay, this is going to happen, you know? And you were sure enough, manifesting it before manifesting was a thing. Yeah, I was, I wrote it down. Yep. And yep. So, um, let's see here. So years later, after I wrote that down, this was, let's see here, I would have to say, I'd have to go back and check my date. Um, around 2011-ish, I'd okay. have to check my date. That's okay. Um, they um, came to my hometown. And so my hometown, every single year, has this art festival. And all kinds of different things, like they might have musical playing, they might have different um, live musician shows that come out. Actually, Three Dog Night played back in oh, like the late Joy 90s. to the World. 
Three Dog Night. Yeah. Jeremiah was a bullfrog. <laughs> yeah. And so they came and performed. So this was back in like maybe 2011 or so, Nelson came to my hometown. And so um, I decided to um, meet up with a friend. And then I found out my aunt and uncle were there too because my aunt liked Wiki. Okay. So it was kind of like I caught up with my friend, I caught up with my aunt and uncle, sat with them. So anyway, we enjoyed the show. And so they played a lot of their dad's shit. They played some of their own songs, but they played a lot of their dad's shit. Yeah. That was when they were yeah. trying to start to kind of get bring back the, the dad's music. And okay, so, yeah. And Ricky, Ricky Nelson was like a teen idol, their dad. Yeah. He was a teen idol in the... It, I guess the fifties or six, like early sixties, right? Mm -hmm. With Ozzy and Harriet, the grandparents had a television show, if I'm not mistaken, on back in the sixties. Right, and so he and his brother. I think his brother is David. Okay, I have to check. Anyway, the brothers were both on the show as well. Okay, and so um, they decided to bring back the dad's music, and currently they are on tour now. Playing the dad songs throughout. Are the they? Oh, so check it out on, on their Instagram page. They always post their um, shows. Oh, that's um, so cool. And so um, I just kind of followed them through the years. Now, so this goes back to my hometown show. And afterwards, they did a an impromptu informal meet and greet. I didn't have to pay any extra for this. At nice. All, okay? Nothing. So not like because, not like we do with new kids. <laughs> no. So um, I posted this picture before on some of my social media where I got a picture with Jenner and Matt. <laughs> and so I didn't have anything to autograph, um, like paper or anything. Yeah. But yeah. I take hoodies with me just to keep the bugs off, you know. So yeah. anyway. Back in the day, back in those days, we used to go to Virginia Beach a lot. So I picked oh, sure. up Virginia Beach pretty, and I had it with me. And I said to them, I said to Gunnar, I said, would you guys please sign my hoodie? And Gunnar looked at me, and he said, are you sure? And I said, yes, please do. Yeah. Hello, Nelson. Yeah. So Gunnar do this cartoon of Matthew and himself. Oh my god! Oh god! Artwork. And then they both signed it. Now I got over Nelson was here at the bottom. So this is my hoodie that I had signed. They I also don't... signed a CD for me here as well. That's not just an autograph. That, that is a work of art. No. That is so, like they re he really made that personal. He really does. Really good. I so love is, that. I can I was not. I don't know what I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting that. That is so so cool. So this is one of my favorite price possessions. Now I would tell you this. I probably wore this hot and sweaty that day. It was a hot and summer day when I took the sweat trip with me. Yeah. So they signed this. This has not been washed. <laughs> I now put it in the washer. Nobody needs to know that, Julie. <laughs> well, he well, I ruined the ink. So, <laughs> so it stays in my closet so that it kept preserved. But yeah, this is one of my favorite prize possessions. What an amazing story. What a great memory to have. That's what this is about. Like, that's what No More Games Radio is about. It's about, um, memories it's about and and the the feelings attached to those memories like talk about such a cool story what a great experience that you had with them how how generous of of them to be so kind and and you know do that for you like when he said are you sure he knew he probably knew what he was gonna do oh a lot of people are telling you to put that in a shadow box julie i probably should so I have kept following them. And so one year, this was several years ago, they offered a vinyl. And Look at that hair. So I got 
got their vinyl, and I love this vinyl. They said it was autographed, oh. and I was expecting them to autograph the album cover. Sure. And I thought, at first, for many years, I just got a stereo player last spring. Oh, nice. With a record player on it. And for years, this was kept in the plastic, but I couldn't find the autograph. There was supposed to be a signed record. I couldn't find it. Yeah. Well, you have to open it <gasps> to find the autograph. Right. I'll show you in just a minute. But anyway, this is the vinyl. Yeah. Okay. Yes. But what I wasn't expecting when I got this record. Yeah was I was not expecting this. <gasps> oh, so, oh, my goodness. So, so they gave you, like, a promo shot, too. Yeah, so this is what they signed, and they put it inside the album cover, and I wasn't expecting that at all. So, yeah, I got my autograph. So, that... I got, like, three signed things from them. I got the CD, a signed CD at home. I got the... I got this. Um, I have still kept following them at the start of the pandemic. Um, they did some virtual shows. Oh, and wow. And tickets for them. And you could put in requests to have them play any one of their favorite songs. So I have done sure. this a couple of times when they have gone virtual. And so they have pulled my request and dedicated a couple of songs to me on two different shows. How cool. And so those are some of my favorite memories, but the one big memory that I absolutely positively love is the fact that um, they played after, no, Can't Live Without Your Love and Affection, and Gunna and Matthew just, I mean, it was just an amazing um, rededication to that song. I was just absolutely floored. And then also, they are on Cameo. Oh, sure. So I, sure. Yeah. I ordered a cameo from Matthew for my niece, Heather, and he did a personalized cameo for her. Oh. And he played, um, I think, Blue Christmas. Oh, wow. Wow. Elvis song, yeah. Blue Christmas. He yes. sang it for her as a Christmas gift from me. It was what? absolutely wonderful. That is so cool. I sometimes wish that the new kids would do cameos, but I feel like. It, first of all, they they do a lot for us, and, and we get to see them a lot online, but I would love to have a personalized message from, from one of them, um, but I feel like their rate would be through the roof. I've, I have a cameo from uh, Brian Abrams from um, Color Me Bad, which is really fun. Um, I'm trying to think of who else. So I got a cameo from. Oh, my friend just turned 50 and his cameo from Ted Nugent. Do you know who he is? Yeah. He's yeah, like an I'm old like... school, badass rocker dude who's off his rocker completely. But he did like a 20 minute cameo <laughs> for my friend. It was crazy. Um, so cameo was a lot of fun. And what a thoughtful gift to get for your niece. That's really cool. Well, my niece introduced me to Nelson. Back oh, when we were both in high school. So that's kind of how I got into the music and started falling in love with these two gorgeous yeah, guys. So. They're gorgeous. Like, yeah. there's no doubt about it. Now, let me just ask you one quick question Do they still have the long flowing locks or have they trimmed it up in their older age? It depends. <clears throat> it, it really oh. depends. Um, like, um, early on in the pandemic, Gunner's hair was a little bit longer. Um, no, and so it's no barbers open. <laughs> not as long as what it was, but kind of like Gunner's was reasonably long enough, but Matthew's was a little bit shorter than usual. Now, I don't know what they look like. I haven't caught up with their hairstyle now, but I know that it was a little bit longer at the start of the pandemic. Yeah. Can you show us that sweatshirt one more time? Because yeah. that is just one of the coolest things ever. Ah, so cute. So, so cool. Let me see if I can figure out which one's which. Okay. Let me see. Did they, Okay. did he so, differentiate? This one, I think, 
Gunner. Okay. Here. And that's Matthew. Matthew. That is so, so cool. Um, Julie, DJ Jules, give us a plug for your show. When can we hear you on No More Games Radio? Sunday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, and make sure that if you want to put in requests, check out our uh, No More Games community, and that's where you can submit your request. I Thank love it. So I love it, and I love you. I love Thank you, you for coming on and for sharing that with us. You are so adorable, and um, and I think everybody really enjoyed that. So. I will talk to you soon, and um, and we're gonna have our next little uh, we're gonna have our next guest come on now. Okay. Most definitely. Love you. Talk to you. Bye, later. Julie. Love, love you. Thank you. Thank you. That was you. so much fun. All right. So now we have a good friend of our station who's gonna be coming on. How do I get out of this? That's a good question. Uh, hang on. Oh, I see her. I hey! see Miss Maribel. Hi. Hello. Hi, Maribel. Hello. How are you? I'm good. I'm so glad that you are here tonight. Maribel is a very loyal listener of No More Games Radio. She also is like a musical historian. And so while she doesn't have like a, an actual piece of memorabilia to share, she has some really cool, fun facts to share with us tonight about what was happening in, in on this day in music history. Am I right? Oh, 30 years ago for today. My other boys, Factory Boys, they came together today. <gasps> That's right. I saw that. I Who posted it, Kevin? One of them. I forget who. <laughs> so, so today is the 30-year anniversary of the Backstreet Boys. I can't Your other favorite boy band. Who's your favorite? I don't know. These guys from Boston. No, but who's your, your favorite Backstreet Boy? Nick. Yeah. Yeah, he's pretty cute. He's he's pretty cute. He's pretty suave. Um, what's your favorite Backstreet Boys song? Oh, God. There's so many good ones. I don't even know where to start. <laughs> So What's your favorite? Album. Well, let's do this. What's your favorite Backstreet Boys album? Oh, yeah. There's the first one. Then there's Millennium, Black and Blue. Mm hmm What do you think about DNA? Good one, too. I loved it. I, I was so impressed with the DNA album. That came out a few years ago, right? 2017? Uh, I can't, can't remember. Or, or 19, I think, right before the pandemic, right, I think. Right, right before the pandemic, yeah. Oh, Noelle says she loves DNA. I, I, I thought it was a really great effort on their part. Um, oh, 2019, says DJ Miss T. Thank you. Um, I w okay, so I was thinking correctly. Okay. So... Okay, so, so today is the 30-year anniversary of Backstreet Boys coming together. And, you know, I have been listening to, have you been listening to any of Lance Bass's um, podcast, Frosted Tips? Oh, my gosh, practically all of them. <laughs> so it's really fun because even though he's from, you know, in sync, he's talked to... Uh, Pretty much every boy band. <laughs> well, and he's so who did he talk to from Backstreet Boys? He talked to AJ, right? Right. Let's see. A he oh AJ he's looking for questions. And, for Howie. So yeah. Talk, so either he has or will talk to Howie. Yeah. 
trying to think who else. I think that's it so far. Or, but or, like the backstreet side, yeah. It's so fun to hear them talk about how you know they looked looked up to our guys new kids new edition um the groups like like that um because they were really kind of the blueprint for backstreet boys and and sync and 98 degrees and although 98 degrees was missing a few guys but that's okay we don't judge them um uh, <laughs> definitely <laughs> Oh, Noelle says she loves Frosted Tips. It's it is. It's a great it's a great podcast, and I love Lance Bass has such a fun and funny personality. He's a really good interviewer. I was surprised. Oh, they're both funny. Him and his husband. His husband is adorable. Um, so okay, so what else do you got for us, girl? What else do I have? And if you don't follow Maribel on social media, you should because she's always posting her um, musical history facts. With your one of my favorite hashtags of yours is "Holy shit, I'm old." <laughs> Hashtag "Holy shit, I'm old," and then she'll say because Backstreet Boys turned thirty today, or you know, uh, a couple of a couple of big ones recently. I feel like, but that's a great oh. hashtag. I know. Holy! I feel like that every morning when I wake up. (laughs) Holy shit! I'm old. We got thirty also on. That's the way love goes. (gasps) Janet Jackson, and that woman is still out there doing her thing. She just started a new tour, um, together again tour. I just saw her on the Today Show. Um, talking about it because she had one of the one of the girls from the Today Show is like a huge Janet fan and a couple of years ago on Halloween she was Janet Jackson and she did like the Rhythm Nation dance routine and Janet saw it and was like you're awesome you should come and dance for me and she just did like J- Janet made good on that pro- on that promise and the girl from the Today Show went and, and danced on the opening night of her new tour now I don't know what spot that um, Sherry was supposed to go to. Oh, really? Oh, my gosh. Have you ever seen Janet Jackson in concert, Maribel? Twice. <laughs> that woman is, like, otherworldly. Is she not? She kills it. She kills it. She looks amazing. She sounds amazing. Her body is amazing. I saw her... her right before the pandemic also and we we couldn't believe it we were like oh mg this woman is better than ever better than ever i love her so holy shit we're old what's next (laughs) holy shit we're old let's see what else can we say holy shit we're old too Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, 30 also on FWB this week. I get so weak in the knees, I can hardly speak. Sisters with Voices, SWV, uh, one of my favorites. I play them a lot um, when I'm in the... Uh... Oh, yeah. Stay quiet. <laughs> I love Sisters with Voices. And it's hard, it's hard to imagine, you know, I say it a lot, Maribel. Julie loves it. We might steal it. Um, I play them a lot on my, on my show when I'm in the R&B mood. And somebody was just posting something about they're winning some sort of award, um, SWV. They're winning some sort of like music, not musical history award, but I don't, I don't know what it was, and I wish I did. I always, like, kind of know stuff, but then I don't know all of it. Um, but they're being honored probably for, you know, their longevity in, in the music industry. So that's a great one, too. Got any more for us? Oh, plenty. Okay, give, give us a few more. That, that's what, 
she uh, she won't shut up, Mariah. Yes, Mariah. It was her. It's not even December, and already she won't shut up. I know. Her <laughs> EMCs were fifteen years. Wow. Wow. That's, that's, there we that, go. That's <laughs> and that's crazy. Another one, uh, Kelly Clarkson. Twenty years. Are you kidding? Twenty years for Kelly Clarkson. When, I feel like I feel like that was just last season on Idol. <laughs> Although she was like, the first, she was the first winner, wasn't she? Very she very, the, first one. Very, very, very first one. Very very first one. And I mean, she really has had quite a fantastic career. Um, and I love her show. Her sh her talk show is really good. She's like, she's like one of the girls, you know. She seems like she's very easy to talk to, and she's not. She doesn't like have like, she's not like a diva. Although maybe she can be. Who knows? But she just seems like she's very down to earth. We might have to see her together because supposedly she might want to transfer over here to the east side. Oh really? So I'll go. Ahead. I'll go check her out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. What? What else? Oh, there it is. <laughs> that one. Uh, Twenty-four years. Twenty-four years. I want it that way. Hashtag. I know. Uh, uh, is it which one is that? I couldn't hear you. Jessica Simpson, Irresistible, 22. Oh, my. You know I always say it, but I don't understand how these songs can be so old when I'm only 29, Maribel. I know. <laughs> we, we, need, we need to, like, do something about it. Oh, my gosh. Um, you got a couple more? Oh, a lot more. Okay, give us a few more. 35 on our girl Debbie Gibson with Foolish Beat. Oh, I love that song. Foolish Beat, Debbie Gibson, 35 years old. That was from Out of the Blue. Was that from on her Out of the Blue album? I think so. I think it might be. Foolish Beat has an amazing saxophone solo in it. You don't get that anymore. You don't get that really cool like retro sounding horn solo in any song in any song anymore this one i went to where um johnny hurt himself upstate new york yeah her um britney oops tour okay the song oops i did it again 23 years whoa wow this is insane. Again, 22 years. 3LW. Players gonna play. Play is gonna play. 22 years also. Alicia Keys. Fallen. Oh, wow. Wow. I remember singing that at my desk at my very first job after I graduated from college. And my coworker was like, I really want to tell you to shut up. But your voice is really good. <laughs> He's like, you're super annoying, but you have a great voice. <laughs> I could, I loved that song when she first came out. I was like, whoa, this girl is got it. And actually, it's not related to American Idol, but it's related to Alicia Keys. I actually auditioned for The Voice. Um, probably in the second or third season that it was on. And I sang an Alicia Keys song and it was amazing. Um, of course I was not on the voice. Uh, they said, thanks, but no thanks. Um, but <laughs> it was very, <laughs> yeah, that's 
no for me dog exactly but it was a cool experience and i really um i love i love her voice i love sometimes when she's live she's like a little harsh she sounds a little like almost like she's kind of screaming or pushing it a little bit but when she's you know on her cds and stuff like that she's amazing sorry alicia just got to be a, tr a truth sayer here. Uh, all right, give us two more, Maribel, and then we're going to call it a night here. Okay, I might have one extra one. After okay, that. give us three more. I might, let's see, 38 years on Madonna Angel. Oh, God. 38 years uh, for Madonna. Now, what do you think of Madonna's recent oh, God. um God. recent work she's had a little work done on i don't know who she went to but i feel bad she doesn't even look like herself anymore sorry madonna they, you're they, still they, they, i don't know you're still a bad ass bitch but you ruined your face Okay, two more. We got we got J Lo with uh, her song on Glad twenty years. Wow, I forgot about we, that song. We got. Uh, <laughs> I did. You forgot about it. I did, but I like J Lo. A lot of people, a lot of people like dog on her because they say she's not a great singer. Um, but I don't see them singing so. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> All right, give us the last one. Drum roll. Oh, wait, we got my girl Brittany again. Oh. 24 years. Okay. Sometimes. Ooh. And we got the album with of Pink and Can't Take Me Home. How many? 23 years. Wow. Pink, 23 years. With that her. is a great. Debut, that's her debut album, Can't Take Me Home. Oh, my. My gosh. So I love pink. Um, and actually, it's a great it's a great thing to end on because this summer, I get to go and see DJ MJ rock. And I believe DJ smiles is going to be there. I think DJ Bethy is coming and we're all going to see pink. Um, in concert this summer because we don't have a new kids show to see and we decided we have to go see something together um so it's going to be pink it's going to be pink and pat benatar is opening and i feel like that's going to be a lot of fun we're going to have a good time so maribel thank you so much i really appreciate you coming on and spending a little time with us and um and and giving us some fun facts and i hope you'll come and do it again oh definitely I, i'll let you know when the when the next time it's going to be next month um but we'll have you come on and do do some more uh musical history facts for us okay let's see which ones appear <laughs> we'll see or that i can think of okay I am so grateful that you came on tonight. It's so, it was so nice to see your face. And listen, we still have to get together and do lunch, okay? I know, right? We will yeah, definitely. Do we'll, we'll make it happen. Yay! All right, my, my friend. Thank you again for coming on. I appreciate it. No problem. See you soon. Bye. 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 All right, you guys, so we have come to the end of the live here. Um, it will be on uh, YouTube, and you can watch it on social media. I don't know how to shut you off, Maribel. I'm sorry. Oh, no. We're amateurs here, people, amateurs. Um, we are. Uh, hang on. So, where are you, Maribel? Well, that's all right. You're just going to close out the show with me then. Um, stay tuned to stay 
tuned to our socials because we have all kinds of fun stuff um, going on all the time on No More Games Radio. Check out our website, nomoregamesradio.com. Check out our Etsy shop. You can become a patron if you want. We have um, different tiers, and you can uh, join and we give you some fun swag and you get to see some really ridiculous um, content that me and the other DJs here create for you. Um, Really, I mean, really ridiculous, but it's worth a dollar a month or $2 a month. Um, Tonight is Thursday. So at 11 o'clock tonight, 11 o'clock Eastern, we have a replay, the final replay of Kelly Moe's Power Hour. You definitely want to check that out. Tomorrow morning at 7 and 11, we have the fantastic weekend vibes from our friend, Miss Sparkles. Um, She also runs our Facebook community. So go and check that out. And at 8 p.m. Eastern tomorrow, we have DJ Miss T, who is going to be rocking your ear holes. And she's amazing. So stay tuned to our Instagram page. You'll know when we go live. Have your requests ready. And, yeah, I'll be back in two weeks with, with a live show. And then we'll be back next month with another episode of Throwback Thursday uh, blockhead show and tell whatever you want to call it and um and if you want to participate please send us a dm at no more games radio or you can send it to me personally at the amanda knight and pull out some of your old stuff it doesn't have to be new kids related it could be music related it doesn't have to be a physical piece of memorabilia it could be you know anything um anything like that oh i, I see kenny kenny do you want to come on really quick and and tell us about this weekend where are you Kenny let me send you a quick invitation why won't it let me Kenny let's see if he if he comes on for a minute. Oh, hi, Sue. How's th- things? How's things down in Florida? I don't think Kenny's coming on. Uh, that's all right. Um, I was going to see if you want to talk about a show that they're doing this weekend in New York City, New York Vibes show featuring our good friends of our station, Roger Ortega. We have Law. We have Riff featuring Kenny and um, Edson Sean. He's my buddy. And that man, he is so talented. He can do anything, anything, anything. Um, Oh, it says Kenny Wilkins is unable to join. That's okay, Kenny. I'll see you this weekend. Um, So I'll definitely be at that show. It's the New York Vibes show. Um, Check it out on any one of their social media, Roger Ortega, Law. um, You guys all know them. Edson Sean, you might not know, but he works with Roger a lot. He's amazing. He's been on uh, No More Games Radio All Access Pass, as has Riff. Many times we've had Riff on. Um, We've also had uh, Nitty Green, who's from Riff. We've had Roger a bajillion times he's a great friend of our station and of course law law is my buddy and uh, i'm looking forward to seeing that show this weekend in new york city and i think that's enough from me tonight dj ak thank you for hanging out with me um we love you guys here at no more games radio without you guys we could not do this uh literally um so thank you so much uh for helping us to realize our dreams and and give us a creative outlet and we hope that you know we you enjoy what we do and that you feel our love and our musical hugs coming to you uh through the airwaves so thanks again and i will see you on the flip side stay safe stay healthy and be kind to everyone because you never know what somebody might be going